Hello everybody, welcome to my first review in a while. This is going to be for The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 1, the season premiere for Season 9, which I thought was done phenomen phenomenally well. I actually got, had the pleasure of seeing it a day early at New York Comic Con. I went to the panel and they showed it. The entire episode after, you know, the panel actually finished up with questions and information and all that good stuff. Um, real quick note before I get started, I apologize for pretty much lapsing on fear for, you know, ever since the mid-season finale. I will get to that at some point, hopefully this week. I will at least try to get a rough overview of what I thought of Fear from episode 8, from the mid-season finale, all the way to episode 16 in the finale. I totally ran, did not have the time to get record a whole lot, unfortunately. When it was when season four of Fear returned, I was away on vacation, so it really backed me up with the episodes to begin with. So I just scrapped the whole idea of doing reviews on an episode by episode basis. I did enjoy Fear. I did watch it. I <coughs> watched all of it, but I will do a general overview of what I felt. And that's honestly what this video is going to be, but I'm going to break down this a little bit more. I'm I'm going off memory, which should be pretty good. I have seen it twice. Actually, I did, even though I saw it on Saturday, I watched it again when it aired anyway. So, I also wanted to comment, I, AMC is doing this, I forget what it's called, but early access type situation, which... Supposedly, that's leading to the decline, led to the decline in viewers of the, um, you know, that night, you know, the premiere episode viewings, because they were down substantially. But you don't know, forget, people who went to Comic Con, people who streamed it early through <coughs> that service, that's going to account for a little, a decent amount of people. So. You know, I'm not too worried. I feel pretty confident that the show is going to do really well, even with losing Rick. You know, I'm glad I got to go to Comic Con and experience the Walking Dead panel. You know, in his la his last season. I wish he had actually appeared for like autographs or photo ops or something, but. Michonne the Nigerian was the only one present for those events. But good panel, good you know, there's some laughs, some sadness, you know, a lot of reminiscing, but they did confirm that Scott Wilson R.I.P. Scott will be reprising his role as Herschel this season along with Shane, which many of you probably knew already. And Sonequa Martin Green, who plays Sasha. So, fortunately, un unfortunate that Scott Wilson passed away. All of his scenes were already filmed for season nine. So, but unfortunately, that he did pass away, it's tragic. That it, it's going to make those scenes that much more emotional. They're already going to be emotionally heavy because it's losing Rick. We know those characters, Shane, Herschel, and Sasha are going to be in flashback form, possible ghost hallucination, hallucination form. Although Herschel's in pictures posted, he appears to be in the season two form, so it could have been a flashback, a scene that wasn't shown you know, an interaction that wasn't shown. You know, how Sasha is going to 
fit in, I'm not sure, because she wasn't really that pivotal in regards to Rick. So she might actually be more of a Maggie flashback, since they did have that moment in Season 5 when Aaron found her. Found them sitting together next to each other. But who knows. But I'm looking forward to it, but I'm getting off track here. I'm here talking about the premiere, and I will have predictions up for the for episode two. But before we get to that, we have to discuss the premiere, right? So I thought it was a solid premiere. I enjoyed getting to see it a day early. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I'm giving it a 10. I don't think... Yeah, there were some things that I felt could have been done better, but I thought it was good. They showed a lot of peace, you know, Judith drawing the painting, Rex has a big belly and a grumpy face, uh, they're walking in the field, snappy, everybody seems to be thriving. Hilltop is doing well. They didn't show the kingdom. We did not see Glimpse of the Kingdom. We know they're still recovering from the war with Negan and the Saviors. But, speaking of the Saviors, they have, they're in the process of getting them back up on their feet. They're basically giving them a lot of supplies still anyway, which is kind of funny. The Saviors, for the most part, seem to be thankful. You know, they thank Rick for everything. Seem to be happy with things. Daryl sort of stepped up to be, well, I think he was probably forced into it. Because he's obviously very unhappy about being there, he doesn't want to lead. There's people writing graffiti, that they're still Negan. So there's some that are unhappy. Probably more than one, probably a good handful resent Rick and the whole situation. But, it's good... They have the system, they have relays going. What else? So, oh, Ezekiel and Carol, that's one of my kind of standout moments. Okay, so the big thing I want to pull from this episode first is the run into the city. They make a run into a museum to get some, basically, look to the past with help for the future. You know, this is all part of the key to the future saying that forgetting I forget her name but that the the woman who was who contacted the hilltop and just wanted records in exchange for all this information. So this is all part of that. This is what they're trying to build, and Alden, if I'm saying his name correctly, really seems keen on helping out with that. So I'm hoping we see a lot of him this season as sort of the voice for the saviors, but more of that moral compassy type as opposed to like a Simon or a Negan. He's more in line with like a Gavin, but he's not a, he was not, not as gung-ho as Gavin was. I don't think Gavin deserved to get speared through the neck like that, but that's another story. So, it's cool. They have a system, you know, they're clearing out the walkers. Rick had his mace kill. That's pretty cool. Michonne decapitated one. Uh, they're riding horses. They have carriage. Gabriel has this cool little hat on. Jadis slash Anne is part of the group now. She seems to really fallen in well from what we've seen so far, so I'm liking that. Uh, Sadiq's going on runs with them, so that's cool, so he's not just your, you know, house call doctor. <laughs> but, um, that brings one of the cool moments of the episode, and the spider walker, where mom spider comes out, and he's like freaking out, he kills the walker, but he's like freaking out with the spiders. There's a lot of reflection in this episode, too. Michonne's looking at all the artifacts and posters and art and things like that, and really just reminiscing of what life was, and that leads her to talk to Rick about making a 
the charter, making some kind of set of rules for what to do, what not to do, basic things. Which, obviously, Savior's not going to be too happy about. Like, well, why are we going back to the old ways? But Because we, at this point, with everybody working together, they have to, to avoid too much tension. Um... What else? Not much else happens there until they're bringing the carriage down with the plow and everything. The boat. Now they had a they had a boat, right? Yeah, they had, they had a little canoe. And a walker already fell down onto the glass and cracked and started cracking it a little bit. They're bringing it across slowly. And Ezekiel falls in. They save him, but. I knew somebody was going in. It was obvious they set it up in the beginning. It wasn't really that surprising. But it was a nice scene nonetheless. You know, however predictable it was, it still was nice. And I still thought it was done and executed very well. So they get back to the sanctuary with supplies. The bridge is out. So that's going to be a focal point going forward. Rick already has the conversation with Maggie this episode. She's very gun, very adamant after certain events that take place in this episode that saviors will supply the manpower and basically give us all this fuel from basically the, the crops. Which I guess she's upset, but this is like kicking them while they're down. This is going to set up more discontent among the saviors than there already is. So, this is not really working out well. But, it's really just setting up conflict, which is probably going to end in Rick getting, getting killed. That's probably where, what they're looking at here. But, so on the way back, they rest the horses so that they can get the machinery through the mud without the horses since they're tired. And some walkers come through. They're finding them. They're trying to get the supplies through. Well, a few people find off the walkers. They get the supplies through, and they the kid Ken tries to free the horse. He can't, so he goes back and gets bit. But that's not even the kicker. LOL pun somewhat intended. He again gets kicked pretty seriously by the horse. Now this is a scene I questioned. They could have done this a lot better. They, realistically, they could have fought off the walkers a little bit more and some one person could have freed the horse. But instead they all just left and left the horse to die and nobody went back to help him, you know. He was the only one who cared about the horse, and he gave up his life for it. His parents are upset, and they want justice, and that leads to the other big moment of the episode. Gregory sees this as an opportunity to try and seize back control of the hilltop by preying on Ken's parents, mother's angry, drinking, father's an alcoholic, Earl, you know... Gregory lures Maggie to Glenn's grave, and Earl attacks him, attacks her. Enid comes, she's pretty much has a concussion at this point, I think, basically. And they subdue him. Maggie confronts Gregory, and Gregory denies it and says he basically doesn't give a crap about all the stuff he's done because he's still here. And she's fighting. He pulls a knife on her. They fight. She gains the upper hand. And basically ends up executing him. Which I thought was well done. And in a way, I'm glad they didn't drag it out like they do in the comics. If I remember correctly, he does try and poison her first in the comics. But I'm glad they went this way. It's done. Although... I would have liked to have seen him a, l a little bit more, but if, then again, if they drag it on a little bit, then it's going to take away from Rick's death, and they want that to be all about Rick. So, 
you want your big moment for the episode, for the first episode, boom, here's Gregory's death. There you go. So Rick talks to Maggie about the saviors, needing supplies, needing help from the bridge. She'll help, but only if the saviors give most of the supply of labor and fuel. She's not doing anything for nothing anymore. Probably missing something. We had Daryl and Carol talking. Daryl, Carol offers to stay behind at the sanctuary so Daryl can go to the hilltop and visit Maggie and discuss more about their little, their little, how they feel about things. Because we, you know, how season eight ended. Um, what else? Daryl basically says to Rick. He's better out, out there. He doesn't want to be in the sanctuary. It's not right. Eugene's there, fittingly. You know, the people there already kind of know him. So that's cool that Eugene's there, but they need somebody, you know, strong there. Like, Daryl. Carol. So, Ezekiel goes back to the kingdom, which I'm sure we'll probably see maybe episode 3. I'm not sure how much episode 2 is going to be focused on how many storylines it's going to be. I know it's primarily going to be about fixing the bridge and diverting this herd, but I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything but the sneak peek. I have to go back and look at that before I give my predictions, which are going to be pretty basic. I'm doing all this without my notes. I'm not. I'm just free-forming this here, so don't judge me too harsh on this. I haven't had a whole lot of time to put together a, a review. It's been sort of a hectic few weeks with work and everything, but I got this done, got this taken care of. I mean, it is a couple of hours before the episode, but I should have this up definitely before. I will try and get these up earlier in the future, but with the way things have been going, this is the earliest I was able to really concentrate my efforts into it. But overall, I thought it was a strong premiere. I loved it. It was an hour and a half. We haven't had an hour and a half premiere in a while. I remember season 8 was only extended by like 10 minutes, which is complete BS. I thought, I feel like all premieres and finales should be an hour and a half. Fear does it regularly. regularly. Why can't The Walking Dead? I mean, it seems like they, just, they pick and choose when they want to do it, and they only do it when it feels right. But I'm getting close to the 20-minute mark here, which is usually where I like to, roughly where I like to end the reviews. But a few things I did, like I said, I'm giving this episode a 10 out of 10. I thought it was as perfect a premiere as we could ask for, given the knowledge that Andy Lincoln's out of the series after few more episodes. I believe episode 5 is the one that, they're, uh, that people presume he's going to go out in. And presumably episode 6 is going to be Maggie's last. Although her story has been announced that it's going to be left open-ended so that she could return down the line if she so desires. So maybe she's going to go on a journey, walk the earth like Samuel Jackson in Pulp Fiction, and that sort of thing. Be a bum. <laughs> but, um, Walker Kill of the Week is... I'm going to give this one a tie. I'm going to give it to Andy Lincoln's drive-by Mace as because of it's his last season, so I'm giving that to him. But in, just in terms of strict, impressive Walker Kill, I'm going to give it to Daryl throwing a little wooden spear at the Walker while on the motorcycle. So that's a toss-up between those two. Skill-wise, I like Daryl's a lot more, but Rick's was also a complete badass skill, so. Those two take the cake for me. Uh, top five moments, pitballing here. Five is museum scene. Yeah, five is a spider walker. I thought that was pretty cool. Four is the whole... 
4 is going to be the sequence where 4 can bite the dust. Teamwork 3. I'm going to give the Ezekiel scene falling through. 2 is going to be all this tension between your saviors, don't like Rick, Maggie's all mm, tense and angry still. And 1, Gregory's execution by hanging. That was handled very well. And I think it's still going to be kind of a lingering point at the hilltop for people. Earl and Tammy that don't think our name's Tammy, right? Yeah, whatever. That lady, crazy lady. <laughs> but that's going to be it for this video. If I apologize if I left anything out. I tried to hit all the key points. But I got to get on and move on to my predictions. And I will see you then. Deuces.